thought my brand new gate was gonna outlast. Not so much. talking to someone who was trying to start their own herd and having to work their own animals what are some things that you've learned that could really help them with the prep work and the laying yeah. the foundation of what you and kevin have been doing over the last couple of days to really make today a little bit easier and more successful than it was before yeah okay all right well, let me start off with big joe and then i'll yeah. come back to that am i good yeah okay yeah so it, Doc, if it wasn't for Doc, I don't know what we'd have really done. I think Kevin or my wife, Marissa, would have probably just made a stop at some point and quit messing with Big Joe. But, man, we were just persistent with him, and Doc was like, well, you, you've got to win. He said, you got two options. One, we can load him up in the trailer, or, uh, or you need to get him worked here. Those are your two options. You can't let him go at this point. And so, because, remember... Big Joe had never been through a squeeze chute. He'd never been really worked at all. And um, so he's about to be seven years old. He's a large animal and it's very difficult to kind of handle that situation. So we got him in there, he got out, got him back in. In the middle of all this, when we couldn't get him to go down the actual lane into the tub, I had hooked onto the gooseneck trailer back the, the, tra the trailer up, getting ready to load him out. We're gonna take him to Stratford. Well, by the time I got backed up, this is, I don't know, 20 minutes later, they had slowly got him into an area where he was. I guess he was tired of us by now, he was worn out. And he finally got him into an area where we could shut a gate and chain it where he couldn't get out. And then all of us together kind of with Doc's ideas of using a panel to make him go straight. See, the problem is he's like a bucking bull. He gets in there and he's spinning around, backing around with those hips. He's fast. And uh, Doc came up with an idea and we made it happen and finally got him lined out, gave him a little poke yeah. in the butt and uh, got him to go down the, the alley into the holding areas, into the squeeze chute, got his weight um, for the first time um, since I got him and uh, that was just super exciting. I think everybody was yelling. I'm yelling at my wife trying to get her to slam a gate and uh, it was just exciting because everybody had known how difficult he was but you know Doc was Doc said you've got to beat him. You've got to let him know who's the dominant um, today. Who's the dominant person today I guess whatever um, and so we won today. We, we defeated Big Joe. He's beat, he's beat me uh, twice now um, but today we won, and so that's just the beginning of him. We've got to be able to keep doing that. He's going to test us again like he did today for 45 minutes or maybe an hour, but uh, we won at the end of the day, and I got his weight. I think it was 1,800 pounds, 1,880 or something like that, was, uh, I think, what he weighed, um, which I knew he was in the 1,800 range or 2,000, so that was awesome. We got his vaccinations done. We got his hair pulled uh, to get him registered and I can find some genetics out about him. So a lot of good stuff happened today. Um, and then a lot of, you know, scary stuff happened today, um, especially working with him. And that kind of brings me into, uh, if you're getting into this, something that I've learned in my short three years of raising these guys one is you gotta have your own working facility. You can take them to a vet if you want. You're gonna take risk of moving them back and forth in a trailer. I lost an animal my first year from getting uh, gored because uh, too tight in a trailer. I was taking them back and forth to the vet. After I lost that heifer, I stopped and we invested in a handling facility. Now it's taken 
two and a half years to build that over time because it is a process um, to adapt to these animals. And so, like I said, every time we work them, we learn from it. And then we remem remember how the situation happened and then we build off of that so that it doesn't happen again. Now, if I didn't have Big Joe, we probably didn't have to make so many adjustments. But because of who he is and how big he is, we have to beef up our system a lot. And uh, because we have to stay safe and we wanna keep him safe. But if you're uh, uh, wanting to, to start raising bison and you're, you're interested in it, you, you really have to be serious because um, when you work with these animals, they, uh, they're great right now. And, and they're nice and calm and majestic. They're out here grazing and it's, it's great. But when you pin them up, that all changes. We finally, with the perseverance of Doc, if it wasn't for him, I don't think we'd have done it, but if it wasn't for Doc telling us that we have to defeat Big Joe today, we have to beat him today, it's not going to be a, we're going to let him win day, uh, we made it happen. I think it may have taken 45 minutes, maybe. He said, you got two options because he had already got out of the holding area at one point. I couldn't get to that gate. I wouldn't even throw. We just have to have a quick latch on that one. He's just like. Let him sit here. Doc will shut that gate and I'll pull the trailer up here and we'll send him out on the trailer. Cut the back it all the way up here, right here. Yeah. Don't let anybody do that. My truck. Yes. 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 Want to share some thoughts? brand new gate was gonna outlast not so much <laughs> that gate was destroyed in seconds less than 24 hours <laughs> yeah literally hung that gate yesterday brand new gate didn't work <laughs> it's a powerful not, animal not big joe proof yeah hey, do you need me to move the Tahoe? yes please all right we're gonna load him up taking the strap for it if we can load him up so we'll see. Wish us luck. My face. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. We're gonna need the luck. Let's see if we can get him loaded. We'll get the trailer.
wants to be good, he's just having a hard time. Where you going, DJ? You're not working cattle. An animal like Big Joe is dangerous. You're not working pigs, you're not working sheep, you're, you're working essentially a, a sort of wild animal. It's in their blood, I know it seems like they're domestic animals. But there's wild in that blood and when you pin them up and you put them in those situations, they get stressed out and it can be dangerous. Towards you, Daniel. Man. He's here. He's here. He's he here. got him. Big Joe is in the I headed to the east, cause life is going down. I packed the ball. Close, I I she is pregnant? Gosh. <laughs> Something's calling me in that purple sky. And as the wheels are rolling, may the spirit never die. Darling, don't wait up, cause I may not come home. My daddy said that if I take this path, I'm on my own. If they come for me, don't tell them where I'm going. I'll be out of sight before too long, cause I'm in go back and you watch and you see what we did with Big Joe. This water on my feet will wash away my sins. And if I die tonight, then notify my next We poked at him and we hot shot at him for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. What you guys have to understand is you're dealing with a big animal. And Big Joe, first of all, is a, is a very nice, calm bull. And then when you put him in a corner, that changes a little bit. He's not trying to hurt anybody. He just wants out. Like I said, these are not sheep or, or goats where you can just kind of shove them through. He just wants out of that pen. But what you guys have to understand, and what my followers, uh, I would like for you guys to understand is, we have to poke them to try to get in a situation.
it is. Got him. I can't play soft music for them. I can't walk them in there with a cube. I can't do those things. That's just not how it works. Um, it doesn't take long to be in this business to figure that out. And that's just part of it. But if you want to have good animals and you want to see production, you want to see them have babies and you want all those things, you want to have that income, you're going to have to work them. Uh, with where they are at today, like I said, they're not roaming in the Great Plains. No fences. It's not like that. They're in a fence today. And because of that, we have to manage that by giving them vaccinations. And so as a, as a beginner, you need to have somewhere where you can work them. Uh, you need to find a good vet that knows a little bit about bison. Um, but, but, but something that really kind of encompasses all this is you just got to be with them. You gotta spend time with these animals. You gotta watch them. You gotta learn from them. Um, and when you do that, and you pay attention to the animals, and you start feeding them, then you start learning how to get them in a corral. Um, those things, which takes time, because you gotta spend it with them, then you can start to figure your system out. And everybody's system is completely different. Everybody's is different, and they do it different ways. You can learn new tricks from other producers like I have over time, and I get tips from people, um, but it's, it's all about you spending time with them, reading them, watching them. They get used to you, excuse me, and then figuring out how to catch them and then work them in your own facilities. Uh, but it's, it's, gotta be, it's gotta be priority to get these animals worked. In the South, um, I know Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, and, and anywhere basically down in this area, um, and even maybe in Nebraska, they may work them twice a year. I know up in the far north, they don't have to work them as much because they don't have to deal with the parasites as bad. Uh, but we work our animals twice a year, and so you gotta have good facilities for that. And um, as a new producer, you just need to know that ahead of time that you're going to have to spend some money into that because you can't go half do. Um, half do will give you half do animals if you're not going all in. You, you got to go all in on these things if you want to do it right. And so that's just what I encourage um, as, a, as a young producer. A gate too needs to go towards you, Daniel. So after we worked at Bison, <clears throat> Doc and I were able to talk, <clears throat> and he's been in this business for so long. He's been to a lot of ranches. He's, I mean, the guy's traveled to Alaska. He's been all over the country. He's taken care of a lot of very important bison. He's been involved with a lot of uh, bison herds, including Yellowstone and like remote Alaska herds as well. So the guy knows this stuff, and that's why I'm so blessed and lucky that he's 35 minutes down the road from me and we're able to get him here to help work our bison. I've got another panel just like that one. That's... If we can suspend it with chain or something where it'll kind of swing a little bit and we can put a rope on the back side and once he gets beyond the rope and we get this shut, we can pull that over. 
in that way. Okay. I got it. And dally it over there so you can hold it. So it's nice for Doc to tell us, you know, hey, you need to put a tub here. You may change the gate here, make this smaller. And that's all part of the learning curve um, that, that goes with that. So um, just a huge help for him to be there, such an advantage. And especially as a, as a beginner uh, bison rancher, to learn from a guy that has so much experience all over the country and uh, to have him right here and uh, kind of tell me what I need to fix and stuff. Um, um, and we'll do that. I'll hold it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. We're going to try a little... Doc says he ain't gonna get away with it. He ain't getting away with it. So what are we doing right here? Well, because our big fella won't go in there, we're gonna try because he keeps spinning. So because he keeps spinning, we're gonna have to try to close this gap. Basically, this this squeeze area where it gets smaller is too big. Especially for him. All the rest of them handle it. He don't handle it very good. So we've got to make the space smaller for his big old butt. Because he just wants to spin like a bucking bull. So if it don't work, don't work, but we'll try. Yeah, just yeah, I told you it'd be a show. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it is. Um it's all it's all part of the growing stages and growing pains of of raising these animals so oh excuse me i just burped but hang on i'm gonna if, if we're um, they will if they ever touch noses they will tear up the fence that field fence over there because i let them touch nose to nose because i let they go out there but so now I can let Big Joe out. So I wanted to work him first before I let him out. Okay, let's take them off. Whew. Good job, everybody. It's about like two minutes of time on the car. You know, it's a little, little scary with Big Joe. We we're able to get him in. Um, so I would say there was a lot more positives today than there was negatives. I mean, yes, we have to learn from mistakes of working them in our handling facility of Big Joe, really. But now we know what we need to do to really try to get him in there. Uh, a lot smoother. Other than that, no animals broke their legs. Some of them tried to jump over the corral. They none, none of them jumped over the corral. None of them escaped. Dunbar didn't escape. Hey, that's the first time that's Dunbar didn't escape. So Daniel can't use that as the uh, as a line anymore. So um, yeah, success there. <laughs> Man, he's here. He's here. He's here. You got him. Okay, Doc. Uh, you wanna open this and then I'll do this. Yep. You ready? You ready? You ready? It's a day. It's a day of the fire. K G. K. D is the dog. K is the K.
Oh yeah. Got any thoughts on working it through, finally getting it through after all that? Back there and he just didn't want to have to go back and take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. No, he yeah. said he's already destroyed your car. It's in training. If you let him get away with it, I mean, I'm telling you, it takes years. Yeah. Did he run on your camera? <laughs>